Alright, power has been out for a while. Here are some tips and tricks I would like to share. These are fairly useful if you're new or are starting new games or something. Remember that in your solo games there is a way to customize your stats. You can manipulate day speeds, XP rate, capture rate, pal appearance rate. There's a whole bunch of stats here that you can readjust to customize your own experience in your solo games. The tech tree. Be very careful when spending points in your tech tree. You gain points by leveling up, discovering fast travel towers, and finding very rare and hard to get technical manuals. You'll usually find them in dungeon chests, but they can be in a world chest as well. So just, just a forewarning, you will not be able to afford everything unless you're constantly farming dungeons and technical manuals from the dungeons. Next up, enhanced stats. There's a bunch of stats that you can level up and customize. Health, stamina, attack, work speed, and weight. I would highly recommend upgrading your weight and health. As in, you're going to be carrying a lot all the time. So an extra carry weight will be very well. How much you'd want to do is up to you. Next set I would recommend is health. Health is f fairly simple. Y you will die less when you have health. This is very useful for a lot of the, especially end game fights, when dying would mean you would have to go back to a fast travel point. Or, in certain servers or like hard mode, you would actually lose most of your stuff and have to go reclaim it with none of your stuff on you. So just HP good. HP makes you die less. Next up, get get a mount. There are a bunch of different mounts. There are a bunch of different mounts. Jet Dragon is probably the end game goal that you want to get for a mount. Is it the fastest flying mount? But other ones like the Dire Hell, the Icredir, the Nightwing, the Vanworm, the Melpaka are also good good for the early game mounts. Next up, base locations. Remember to put your base near a bunch of ore nodes. This base has ore nodes and cone nodes, call nodes in it, which is very, very needed for the end game. You start getting into end game crafting because you will need a lot of ingots. So, when you come across good base locations, I'd highly recommend marking it on your map. You can make custom markers on your map for these, just to remind you to build a base there. Also, you can have three bases total. When upgrading your base by doing little side missions through your PAL box, you will gain access to more PALs per base and more bases in general. Remember, bosses respawn. All of these world bosses on the map will respawn, so if you're trying to capture certain alpha boss type enemies, then remember that all of these bosses on the map will respawn after a certain amount of time. It's usually one day cycle, so in the morning after a night cycle completes, usually they'll respawn then. Note the condenser. So the condenser is something that requires ancient technology points. So it requires a certain amount of POWs to obtain POW fluids from to upgrade a specific POW. So let's say you bred a POW with very, very good stats and special abilities. You can use the POW condition to enhance that POW even further. You will need a lot of POWs for this. So if you want to focus on making like the strongest best pal of one specific type then be sure to keep this in mind when catching pals so let's say if you want to upgrade your chickpeas ideally find one find the one that you want to upgrade then you're gonna have to sacrifice a bunch of the other ones that you don't want and this will upgrade the chickpeas special ability and their base stats as well 
Next up, the merchants. This is a small settlement here in the very starting portions of the map. Make sure you make notes of merchants that you find across the world as they can sell pals and items. You also can sell your pals to the pal merchants and sell your precious items, usually gained from bosses, to these merchants for gold. Gold weighs nothing. It, it actually just weighs nothing. But these merchants are very important, especially when you find the later game merchants, because they sell some very good stuff, like ammunition for your guns so you don't have to craft it, so it is very important to make note of merchants you find out in the world. The Vixie. When starting games in new servers or with your friends or wherever, or just new game or hard mode or just, just starting a new game in general, starting new servers. With PvP coming along, there will be a lot of new games if, you, if you're interested in PvP. If not, that's, that's fine too. But the Vixies are very important for just making an infinite supply of PAL spheres, arrows, and free gold for you. Your location on the map is usually just this one spot. That small settlements and around where King Paka spawns is where all these Vixies will usually spawn to. V very, very useful in the early game. Next up, Legendary Schematics. So, King Paka, this is King Paka right here. I'll zoom out just to show you where it is. King Paka. King Paka drops a legendary schematic. The tier 5. I believe it was tier 5. It was the yellow goldish bow schematic. It is very powerful in the early game. So this is something that you can farm very early on. And use for a while. Bushy drops the legendary crossbow schematic. So when you get to that point where you believe you can beat Bushy. I'd highly recommend going to Bushi and farming that crossbow command because the crossbow is very useful for the majority of the game until you get actual guns. Next up, the Blazemut. The Blazemut drops the legendary assault rifle command. The drop rate is very low, but this is another way to farm a legendary schematic that is very good. Let's see, the beacon. Where's the beacon? Beacon. The beacon here on the map drops the legendary handgun schematic, which is very useful as well. The Suzaku, Suzaku very northeast on the map in the desert region, can drop a legendary shotgun schematic. Now, now we're going into endgame territory. This is Palladius and Gladius, one of the legendary two of the legendary creatures that you can find. These drop the legendary PAL heat resistant and PAL cold resistant armors. They're very difficult, they're level 50 and near impossible to catch without legendary spheres or the hyper spheres. The Frostalian drops the legendary PAL helmet schematic. In the in the western southwestern volcanic region, you can find the jet dragon. By farming the jet dragon, you can potentially get the legendary missile launcher schematic. Very powerful, very useful. Oh, going into our next one, bases. You can use your bases as fast roll points, and this is very important when farming certain items. So you can make a base very close to certain bosses like this jet dragon or the frost stallion or the palladius and you can just instantly go there anytime when they respawn and try and farm them next up the sanctuaries this is sanctuary number one in the very southern part of the map this is the plateau beginning so just this giant rocky thing in the distance these have very very rare and unique creatures on them that you can usually only obtain from breeding or actually going there and capturing them. You will gain a warning. You will be trespassing on ground when going there though, so it's very important that you will probably get a wanted level and be chased down by PIDF guards if you go there. This is the sanctuary number two in the very western part of the map. 
and Sanctuary Number Three in the northeastern part of the map, past the desert island. All right, those were a few tips and tricks. If you liked that, be sure to follow, leave a sub, and I will catch you next time. I'll be talking a little bit about Power Run here and there, because it is a very fun game, and I'm enjoying myself immensely. <laughs>